So yeah. Screw that. I want to see touchdowns. I want to see plays. I don't want to see you jogging around for 30 yeah. seconds. I want to see you off the clip go. Okay, touchdown you cut it, play. Cut it before you drop. Let me live, bro. It's 2011. <laughs> <laughs> one gummy, one brownie, and 32 minutes of the Punch Drunk podcast. And I can't stop fucking laughing. You're an asshole. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Punch Drunk Podcast. I'm Paul Brooks, joined always from Michael. What's up? Mike Lane. Howdy. And Joey. How's it going? And joining us in studio, on the couch, is someone who was a local star athlete in high school, went on to attend Stonehill College, where he starred at college, multiple Northeast 10 recognition awards in the conference, <clears throat> set broke records like crazy, and is now tearing it up in the European League of Football. <clears throat> Just coming off the recent championship victory, please welcome from the rain fire wide receiver, Nate Robitaille. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Nate, it's uh, it's great to have you here. We've been trying, and finally, uh, you're back for now. <laughs> yeah. <right? laughs> yeah <clears throat> Talk about travel. Yeah. Um, but you're over in Germany. So you played, you know... I want to talk about a little bit of Germany, but, you know, the most recent thing is you came back from a pretty significant injury. Yeah, this year. Yeah. yeah I, I've been uh, I've been lucky enough to not be injured much. Um, this is my first year in, injured in 20-something years, 24 years, I think, playing football. And then, then you turn it around, you come back, and, you know, from injury, you go to the <laughs> championship, and you happen to score two touchdowns, and... Had over 100 and some odd yards receiving. Yeah, it was return, like my dad. You returned like kicks too. Uh, I did. I did. <laughs> I did return kicks. Um, they didn't want me to do it this year. Yeah, just because they had a guy that was doing pretty well, so they they kept him with that. But um, yeah, my dad told me today, just off the couch, really, just came off the couch and went back to normal. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, the what is the Stuttgart surge? Is yeah, that? Stuttgart surge. Crazy what? story is that um, everybody on that team came over from the team that I had played with prior from 2017 to 2020. The whole roster, the coaching staff, everybody was um, the Swabish Hall Unicorns, the two rings we have up here. Some crazy names over there. like uh, Even even names you played for, like the Crocodiles. Or the yeah, in Finland. Schobeck Hall. I don't even know yeah, if I have the... Swabish, Swabish, Swabish Hall. Hall. Swabish Hall. Yeah. Uh, Frankfurt Galaxy. Yeah, Frankfurt Universe when I was when I was there because they, uh, they had to switch the name due to copyright. Wow. So they switched the name to Universe for a year, and then, uh, yeah, now they got the Galaxy rights back, so now they're Galaxy. <clears throat> so, you know, for those who are, who are listening in the Attleboro area, the entire Tri-County area, Southeastern Mass, I mean, you were an absolute stud in high school at Attleboro High School. Um, Thank you. I remember watching you. Uh, certainly your name was well broadcasted out there throughout the media. But you were a quarterback, and quarterback. then you transitioned. Were you recruited – to Stonehill as a quarterback, or so I was. I was recruited um, by mostly everybody as a DB. Really? Yeah. And I, I don't like to hit much, but um, I was I was recruited as a DB, and then um, Stonehill brought me in, and they said, "Hey, we're going to give you an opportunity to compete wherever you want, kind of, um, except quarterback." And then I went there, and the first thing I did was went to my locker, and I had eighty six. I said, "Well, I can't play any other position with eighty six. I'm yeah. goofy." <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so so i mean look what you did when you got the stone hill right yeah it was it was rough though um my freshman year was my first year of kind of like because you come from like you said attleboro and kind of dominating and doing what you're doing yeah and then you even though it's, it was division two back then now they're uh fcs you go into a situation and that coaching staff then was kind of i had a lot of coaches in between that my four years there my first year was a whole learning curve from playing quarterback to now receiver and I had to learn a whole different position from a different aspect of the game and then the coach was just everything was um back then 2000 what 11 11 11, 11. 11 yeah 2011 that was a big year for Oregon right the Oregon Ducks and everybody loved that offense fast high flying so we had a coach who wanted to bring that to Stonehill I was like I got to learn their position learn this high flying offense I was what was, me, your, my what head was your was speed like me I I consistent 4-4 probably until recently oh so you're just like yeah. me <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've been a consistent four four guy. Um, wow, which is good. Paul's only four four when he has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost a second. I, I've lost a touch. On that one. Um, so you guys go out, and you kick ass over the surge. There was fifty three to thirty four. You end up. I mean, uh, we were watching some media clips. I don't know if we have one. 
if we're going to skip around here, but yeah, what I found fascinating is that league that you're in. I swear we have, they have better logos than the NFL or anywhere else. They have some serious badass logos. Yeah, they uh, that that's the whole push. The European League of Football right now, their whole push is media based. Half half the contract we have is basically on your media and your rights. For them to use you and to their name and all so that. So it's stuff. all like marketing. Yeah, it's complete marketing. <clears throat> um, and I, people will give me backlash for this, but it's the same. For me, it's the same level as it was in the German Football League. Mm-hmm. Everybody that played in the German Football League is now playing in the European League of Football. Just because you switched teams and switched names, does that mean you automatically did this much better at football? No. So my whole thing was, yeah, you have a little bit better coaching because you have guys that come over from the NFL now and, and they're coaching and helping out. But the product on the field may be a little bit better. I think it's more even instead of better. For you, that is. Oh, for me, I'm still dominating. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> well, for, no for you, it's always for me, I'm easy. Still dominating, for yeah. other people, for, for, yeah, for other people, it's I, I, I work too hard for to have yeah. those guys make it easy. For you, for it's me. easier. Yeah. So the one thing I think a lot of people notice is obviously your athletic ability, right? But let's cut the shit. Mm-hmm. You've got a serious head of hair on you that, yeah. <laughs> that you gotta tell me that that has got to get noticed in germany oh yeah all over the place um r- right now if i'm yeah, look at that, that photo look yeah, at that. if i'm out in the city everyone knows you got more hair than the guy next to you exactly <laughs> yeah lucas he's actually <laughs> lucas in the cfl actually now it's my buddy he right. um yeah my hair has been it's kind of my trademark i started it in 2017 and just kind of just stuck with it yeah, he didn't have that in the Stonehill nope. photo. He had uh, a little mohawk. My uh, my there. dad definitely wants it out, and uh, my no, mom is just like whatever. And actually, funny story: the Stonehill picture um, with that little mohawk thing right there. They asked for my photo my senior year because I ever did it every year. <laughs> they balded it out on the <laughs> on the on the internet, the internet site. And then I I asked uh, the AD, the athletic director at Stonehill. I said, "Why is my hair gone?" He said, "Ah, oh, we just didn't like it." So so they covered it. They covered it purple. Wow! In today's day and age, that's a lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> this, soft, this, this soft generation, that's a lawsuit. I could have came up with some money with Stonehill. You can't. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about um, for those who don't know the, the European League. Yeah, so the European League of Football. Um, actually, the European leagues in general. I think it's just a great avenue now, and I didn't know about it until my buddy. So I got put on by my friend uh, Nate Morris. He's now in the military, but he was out there at Swabish Hall in 2014. Um, that was his first year out there, and I was still doing the NFL bit. Had a couple of tryouts in the NFL and did my pro days and stuff and went through the whole draft process. Um, didn't get picked up, and that whole summer, 2015, I was just training. Training and trying out, training and trying out. And he said, hey, I have an opportunity for you in Frankfurt, Germany next year if you want. They're coming into a lot of money. Um, the team is going to be brand new. They're going up to League One finally from their NFL Europe days where they had to start in a lower level. It's like soccer. How they do it is like the okay. soccer thing. You have to move up if you go down. So that was my first year right there in that photo um, with the Samsung. And they, um, yeah, so I went, he got me out there and then kind of the rest is history. And there's leagues in every country. Um, I would say Germany is probably the best country. <coughs> they have like the most talent. It'd probably go Germany, Austria. Um, France has a lot of athletes. Not many O linemen and stuff. And then after that, I think there's a huge drop off when you go to Italy and Finland and I mean some of the Spanish leagues and stuff. But it's just it's growing. Yeah. And there's a lot of a lot of love for football out there and, and people they enjoy it and they really, really like they brought the NFL, was in London, then they brought it to Germany the last two mm-hmm. years. And I was at the Kansas City game. I mean it's packed out. They, they the, I yeah, to they sell buddy. some serious tickets. For yeah, I, I, mean, I talked to my buddy. Who, uh, yeah, our games. Your are games packed. are packed. Well, only, yeah, full stadium. It's, it's different. Like our our stadium holds thirty two five, but we only had eight to ten maybe. It's it still packed. it's growing, but it's still yeah. it's still in that beginning phase. But back to your point, like I was saying, um, one of my buddies is a safety for the Patriots. He's a special teamer, and I asked him after the game how it was, and he said, "Well, obviously it sucks that we lost, but just to hear that there was three million requests for tickets." For only 50,000 seats. Wow. It's crazy. So they really, in Europe, they really love American football and they like, it's growing and. That's great. So yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing over there now. Yeah. I mean, originally when they started with putting games in Europe, I was like, what are they doing this for? <laughs> like people that have season tickets are going to be pissed. They're losing yeah. a game. Like, and now it's just to see what it's grown into. It's crazy. Yeah. And yeah. It's money. Like it's money. You see all those stadiums that are absolutely huge because they're soccer stadiums and they're just loaded with mm-hmm. people. Yep. And people are going nuts. Yeah, for real. When you say it's money, is it a lot of money? I mean, do you have like 
maybe if you can explain not not your contract value, but mm -hmm. do you have contracts or how you? I heard you. You know, everybody over there is paid a little differently, and then yeah. there's rule structures and so. So, forth. How, so how basic like your I, when I was speaking about money was the NFL definitely their U.S. is saturated right with, yeah. with football. Yeah, they got to branch out, make more money elsewhere. Now they're going to attack the world with it: Mexico, London, now Germany. Um, and as for us in European football, um, I was told kind of like this. Basically, our yearly salary would equate to between 70 and 90K. But they take care of all of the the house, the car, the food. Some some places get the food. Right. So you don't have to worry about that. And so they and then the rest of the money that they get that they don't have to spend on taking care of you, um, housing you wise and all that, then that's that's kind of your contract money. That's your smart spending money. So when they put you up, do you have to live with like Sometimes, sometimes like my, so my experience has been different from a lot of other people. Like I tell everybody, I had the best of the best. Yeah. When I went to Frankfurt, I had the most money. Samsung was our sponsor. They gave us half a million dollars, euros to work with. And we had everything you needed. I had Wi-Fi in my car. I had a brand new, a flat. Everything was good. Um, and then I went to Swabish Hall and I lived in a, like a, an old tile building with, with three other guys. And it was an old tile building in a dungeon. We had to go down downstairs to shower and it was just like one big communal shot it was crazy yeah okay <laughs> and then um that. yeah it was nuts <laughs> and then i went to finland and then finland was a nice two-bedroom apartment like big big living room balcony big kitchen and then now um eh, same thing in um ryan fire in dusseldorf it's expensive but they kind of hooked everybody up with nice flats and stuff like that so it's very different on where you're going to be mm -hmm. um around europe but for the most part if you I've never had to experience anything crazy, but I've heard horror stories of European players and not getting paid and living in crappy situations and travel and all that stuff. But, but you're not also one of those lower tier players. I mean, yeah, so that's, I've been lucky. You're at the top of your game. Yeah, so. exactly. I've been lucky. Um, yeah. So it's been good. So do you do you have contracts that run out or they go like two yeah, three so, years? Yeah, so or usually, it's, year? usually it's yearly. But there is like, so when I was in Swabish Hall, um, they kind of knew the core that we had. They wanted everybody back. So it was kind of like not a, it was a no brainer to say, yeah, we're coming back. And that contract just kind of kept going. And then they would just kind of tweak some things, give you more money, give you more perks. Um, but now in the Euro European League of Football, they kept everybody on one year, one year um, contracts. And now they're starting to give guys two year contracts. For me, I want longevity in the game. And I think that my, after I'm done playing, I think that me helping out in the European space is better to be there than here. Because like I said, football is saturated here. You have all these foot doctors and yeah. weightlifters and all stuff that people can help out and train, conditioning coaches here that help out with football. Over there, they're yearning for it. They want somebody to come in and help them out and understand the game of football. How well do they pay their coaches over there? Do you know? I have no clue yet. They need help. I think I'm about to get. Yeah, I think I'm about to get into that yeah. sphere. Pretty when you soon. fly back, I'll go with you. Yeah, you, yeah <laughs> wherever we going, you can start setting the standard trade. I'm an unemployed <laughs> coach right now, but I'm not ready to get out. Um. Well, so so just I, I just want you to know that Joey does analytics and handles all our like we have an international following yeah. that is up. What's the percentage, Joey, on that? Um, a lot of people are from Ireland. There's definitely some German people watching this okay. that are that follow us for some reason. I don't know why, but <laughs> hopefully they can. A lot of them will watch us now since you're on. Yeah, definitely. That's the, I mean I'm gonna blast this out, obviously. So absolutely, definitely we're gonna get that blast going. It up. But we have like a I don't know, was it like a twenty percent. Ratio of international, yeah. So. They, well, they, what's up, my Europeans? I mean, it's not like it's not like just. It's a weird, yeah. I don't know why it's so high. Usually, usually accounts that do this is like two percent yeah. overseas. Ours is like twenty, but whatever. It, it's well, keep it rolling. That's yeah, the only thing. Doesn't hurt us. Keep it watching. rolling. Keep it rolling. I mean, it's not like we're four guys sitting in the basement. No, or no, 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 so before I let it go, I because I'm gonna have to have a sip of this. This is your drink. So we also say, pride our podcast in doing like testing of <laughs> you know food testing. Yeah, uh, we've eaten quail eggs before. We've mm -hmm. eaten a, like a lot of shit. Well, some of us did. Uh, so those I'm good. I'm good. Those, I'm good. I don't sweaty wanna... balls from Germany. Uh, Austria. Got it. 
Austria. All right. Wow. We we usually every month we do like a box from like a random country. Yeah. We had Germany. I forget what. It's all like snacks. Yeah. Oh, sna- a snack countries. a snack box. Yeah. Yeah. Always, yeah. yeah. We had Germany and we, there's one extremely terrible, disgusting dude. snack. But oh yeah, I wouldn't eat that. We're right. happy. You might. You might. Knowing you, you might. Normally we have, <laughs> <knowing> you, you <laughs> might. Normally we have beers on this or a drink of choice. But yeah. In this case, we're gonna go with your drink of choice, That's good. which Dis- is Disarono and Sprite. Disarono and Sprite. Amaretto Sprite. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for coming out. Good. Cheers, yeah. It's a cream soda right there. It's a cream soda right there. Yeah, it's very sweet. Um it's good to have it's good to soda. have when you're just relaxing. And on a nice yeah, you can't nice have cold like, day, relaxing. I couldn't have like ten of them. Oh no, no, no definitely not. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple and then a I mean there's a couple of Tito's and sodas I could have ten of those, <laughs> but I can't have ten of these. <laughs> Joey, go back to those loaders. <clears throat> Some of the logos. I mean, Hamburg Sea Devils, the Rainfire. Yeah, they go crazy. What's your uh, favorite? The Bravos have My got favorite? a really good one. Yeah, Madrid. I love. Uh, I don't Dude, know. look at the Vienna Vikings. My favorite so is Rainfire. I like Paris. Vikings logo. I like Paris. The Lowe's, whatever it is. The Musketeer oh, yeah. symbol. I was gonna say that too. The Musketeer yeah. symbol it looks whatever. like a ninja star. Yeah. My, <laughs> my favorite is Rainfire, number eighty-six. Yeah, me too. You, the, and my, you and my mom. The Sea Devils and, <laughs> Dang, and the Milano you and Mama sea, robes. The Milano <laughs> Sea Men. Yeah, wow. the Seamen. Everybody got a joke for that one. <laughs> yeah, we got to be careful. It's Sea Seamen? Men. Yeah, <laughs> Seamen. Everybody but got that's all right. <laughs> Anybody who gets on a Navy ship is the same thing. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's they got good ones there. But yep. Sea Devils, it's a pretty. Uh, that's a pretty crazy one from Hamburg. Yeah, I think uh, the I think my favorite jersey though is the Ravens. Like that black and baby blue. That was pretty sweet. Like, yeah, so, you know, that Barcelona Dragon, that's one of the originals. The the logo itself. Yeah, so actually funny it. story. I so the first the first year of the European League of Football was twenty twenty one. I was in talks with Stuttgart. Um and they said I they were talking about I was bring in a quarterback from Switzerland, I was gonna get another receiver, we we're gonna get things rolling because I love that area. And then um they said I wasn't gonna have a car and I said, Ah oh, shoot. I can't. I like having. You said it that way. Oh uh, yeah. I was like, shoot. yeah, yeah. I, was, I like having. You can say shit. Yeah. You didn't say like, ah, stoop. Ah, yeah. stoop. <laughs> no, I just like I like getting around. Okay. So then um, I said, ah, maybe not. Maybe not here. And then Barcelona reached out to me. And this was before they were the Dragons. This was when they were the Barcelona Gladiators. Yeah. And they were blue and yellow. They had a different logo. Um, I was there. Th- I was there through a whole bunch of their like beginning talks and coming in sponsors and everybody. And I was going to be their first uh, American signee. And I signed on a Sunday and on Friday they took the contract back because it was kind of, we went back and forth about, um, what kind of card you asked for. Where we're from getting car? No, from uh, Barcelona. Oh, I'd ask for a card. <laughs> so, so how they wanted to do it was they wanted to pay all their imports the same price. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I don't know if I can do that. My man, I didn't know if I can go that low. So they, they moved it up and everything, and I was perfectly fine with it. We came to an accord. Everything was great, and I was like, I'm signing. Called my dad. Called him on Sunday. I'm signing to Barcelona. I'm a dragon. Um, he was so excited. And then Monday, he calls me. He says, hey, would you um, want to be the wide receivers coach? I said, oh, okay. Um, so what does that entail? Do, am I, do I have to be in the office every day? Do I have to put together with the game plan? Am I working on with all this stuff? And what's the extra price for that, for being a player and a coach? And then he said, uh, let me get back to you on that. Tuesday came, didn't really hear nothing. Wednesday came, he got back to me. Um, we ruffled around some things. Um, Thursday came, and then he said, hey, Roby, um, I think we're going to go a different way. I don't want to um, I don't want to lowball you, one. And two, I don't want I don't want to be able not to pay you on time and not to give, this, give you everything on time because it's a new organization, a new league. We don't know what's going to happen. So I can't promise you this and then have you – come and then stuff gets messed over because i know your resume i know who you are now he said i just don't want to mess you up is that a common thing to be a player coach um in the lower level in the lower levels lower leagues yeah for sure but for this one um i don't know and this kind of it came about i talked about it and even after that fact when he's like hey we're gonna go a different way because they didn't want to pay the extra i was like i just asked i didn't i wasn't asking for like am i gonna get it i was just asking and they kind of uh they went back and a little bit of miscommunication but uh, yeah, I was a Barcelona Dragon for a day. four days. <laughs> well, they, they suck. We don't want them. Yeah. Four days. They suck. We don't want them. Yeah. They actually beat us twice the following year, <clears throat> which is trash. But is it? There's, so they have a funky rule over there. They can only have like X amount of Americans playing on the team. Is there a rule that says that each team can only have so many? Yeah, you can only have four 
four Americans on a team. Huh. Two offense, two defense. We're oh, so good. Really? It's right. gotta be positionally. Well, uh yeah. Two offense, two defense. I mean, you can get a kicker if you want, but Will they count? Yeah, they would count. I think Finland actually my buddy in Finland who played at Colorado, he's a running back, probably one of the best in Finland. Um, in Europe, actually, he um, they just told me that in Finland they have five now, and the fifth player has to be an offensive lineman. Are the American players the best ones on the team usually? <laughs> yeah, it, it's so so. I you're, mean, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so you're you're brought in as like a, uh, <laughs> to to bring like, like, yeah, like, like, like you're staying. Yeah, you're staying. Yeah. You're coming to push. It's you. like men's softball when they bring up like only two like twenty year olds. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, are those guys coming out straight out of college, or are they some may some, have just made the NFL yep, and got dumped after a year? Or so, so the coach in Stuttgart actually that was my guy in Swabish Hall. Um, his his whole thing was. You, he, he wants to bring in players that are on the cusp of the NFL okay. or guys that just got cut. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of the level of players and talent that is in the in these leagues now is because guys are starting to understand, okay, if I don't make the NFL, what's what's the next possible thing? The CFL, uh, it's a crapshoot. It's a different league, different rules. And then the European leagues now is starting to gain a little bit of traction with all these players coming from America. At least they can keep playing football. Exactly. What are your thoughts on the XFL? I think it's great. I think it gives it another avenue for guys to play the game. Mm -hmm. But they've been having, I mean, even I f fell into that trap. I was down at IMG Academy in uh, Florida trying out for a uh, spring league. Mm. I mean, there was so many spring leagues from 2015 to now yeah. that would just been up and down, up and down. But I you always said great. that wasn't for you either. When We talked about that, and you said the XFL wasn't really No, your no. It no. wasn't your thing. No, not right now. I, you were feeling it. No, I, I've, had, I've had too much... Um, too much success. fun, too much fun, and too much success in Europe. Yeah. And I just have too much, um, too much skin in the game to just kind of let it go. Mm -hmm. I have too many connections, too many people that I would just leave and let it go. Which is to my point now, like okay, I'm sitting here, and in my mind, I'm like, where am I going next? Because I don't know if it's going to be at Ryan Fire. I don't know what what's going on. Because like I said, everything's a one year contract. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to figure all that out. And, yeah, and you got to kind of match it up with who may have three or four exactly. Americans on that team. And then you got to match it up with what you want to do in your life. Especially me being being a tad bit older than than these guys, trying to figure out where my longevity stays and who can help me kind of stay and and help grow the game. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, you may save it if you do. Um, Special teams as well, right? Mm -hmm. Kickoff, punt return, whatever. Mm -mm. No, no punt return. And like you said, when you bring over the Americans, they're kind of like a, it's like a prize. You don't, you don't let them do mm. the, the dirty work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but you do like, I mean, you bring over your athletes, so you kick off, punt return. Um, guys will block gunners and stuff like that, but there's really no kickoff. But our kickoff rules are different. Our kickoff rules is the XFL kickoff rules, so everyone lines up at the thirty, whatever it is. Yeah. And then you do that whole bit where you wait till he catches it and then take off. I like that way better than a normal kickoff. So I I agreed with it for their whatever whoever wants to talk about their saving their bodies and stuff. Yeah. But for safety. me, yeah. but for me, it takes away from guys that are just special team guys. Gunners. Yeah. It it, 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 it takes does. away it takes away for the the two or three up men that are blocking. It takes away from the line guys. It takes away guys that just run down on kickoff. Yeah, guys that are actually really good at that position. Yeah. Exactly, and, yeah. it's, and it takes away from just positions because you're a backup position. What would Matt Slater be without that? No, he'd be out the league. Exactly, that's he'd what I'm go. saying. It yeah. takes away a position for a guy who and really he's a perennial pro bowler. <laughs> yeah, on yeah. yeah, but the argu the argument is: Do you care about that person, or do you care about the guy looking straight up at the safety. ball trying to catch it? And I guess the it, argument you know, would those be: guys are How down much like crazy? Yeah. How much is player safety? What's what outweighs mo more? You know what I mean? Does the taking away positions outweigh the player safety, but how much is player safety like really impacted in a kickoff? You have to really look at that. Yeah, it does take away. It does take away, like you said. It's, mm. it's it is a little better for safety, but I I just I just believe it just takes away. Yeah, it just takes away from the guy that's the second string linebacker who never plays from right. him being yeah. lined up to run down or being lined up to sit Make there and wait tackle. and kill somebody coming down the field. Mm. So yeah. Do you still hold the uh, single uh, uh, single game record for most receiving yards in the ELF? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was almost, I dropped one pass. It would have put me over three, but uh, butterfingers. Yeah, no, yeah. Saw that. Was <laughs> you popcorn was before that should have had that. Yeah, it was nonsense. <coughs> Pop, Two hundred eighty-six <laughs> yards. Huh? Popcorn before the game? No, I was actually. I thought the safety was closer. You got scared. Yeah, I did a little nerve, scared. a little nerve wracking. <laughs> he, he floated. I was like, ah. I was like, man. Yo, that was like, yeah. yeah. it, it was one of it was a business decision. It was one of, the, yeah, it was one of these like <laughs> footsteps. 
And then he turned around and he like wasn't you. even near me. It was not like me at that all. That safety was an American, but that's the way. not like you. It's <laughs> not like you. It's not like me. I'm a knucklehead. I, I'll go over the middle. I'll, I'll take dig out somebody. I'm the. That's how you got hurt. Yeah, actually. That's how you got hurt. Nonsense. Talk about that for a little bit, though. You were healthy all the way through. You mentioned it already. High school career. Yep. Uh, great career that was. And then college, even better. Mm-hmm. Now you get into, into the uh, European League. <clears throat> Everything, everything, every level you played at, every year you played, it was all injury free. And then this year, yeah, you uh, had a pretty tough injury. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and that injury didn't. So I ran a. So this route, it's a like a drag route, and it's just an over route where you got to get like fifteen, eight, eighteen yards on the opposite opposite uh, hash. And I ran it. I've been running it all year. My coach is kind of he was a stickler on how to run it. And for some reason, the first four games, he just wouldn't. He's like, Roby's not running this route. He can't run it. Like, it's it's just not matching up right now. Yeah. And so that was the whole thing all year. It was like, okay, I'm not running the route, then screw it. So then he we called timeout. Is coming out of halftime. I said, yo, just let me run a double move here on this corner. He's trash. I have him. Just run it up. He said, nope, we're going to run this. I'm like, I thought you said I wasn't running this. He said, nope, this is the play call. So I run it. I get across. I break the safety down. The ball is a little bit high. I shouldn't have jumped. Um it hit the safety in the face mask, and then he just full speed hit me, and then I think my arm extended, and I just kind of tweaked uh, my AC joint. Toward, toward the AC joint, the CC joint um, had a little bit of tear in it, but the uh, AC joint was the full tear. And it was just a nonsense injury. Like, when I hit the ground, I just knew something was wrong. Um, I didn't know what, and I said, ah, it's, this sucks. Did you thank that coach for making you do that route? No, I didn't get You're to not listening him. to you. No, because because he, he he's been in the NFL for some odd years, so they just went right to the next. They they know how it rolls. <laughs> he just went right to the next, right to the next, right to the next thing. Now, did uh, you have surgery on that? Nope, nothing. Just uh, just clean in physio, working in physio. That's all I was doing. I did physio from June 25th, um, when I got hurt. Actually, crazy story. So I got hurt. I got hurt. My parents were there. I got hurt. Went to the hospital. Got checked out. Says so my AC joint. The next day, I had to go do an MRI. And I'm usually fine. I freaked out. I got that MRI. Like tight I got. And, I got an MRI machine. You opened your eyes. Oh that's my god! That's yeah, what I'm, I'm <laughs> laughing because I can picture you. And I, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> I got in that machine and I laid there and they put me back. He's like, "You good?" I'm like, "Yeah." And then I, I closed my eyes and I was counting and I count. I got to 24 and I opened my eyes. And I said, screw this. And I started squeezing the ball. I had to get out. I, I got to get out. I got to get out. <laughs> that does not surprise yeah, me at and, all. And I you. got out. And they were like, what's wrong? I said, I can't do it. Not today. And I got up. I started walking around in my underwear and all over the place. <laughs> all, I was, the doctor came around the corner. He peeked his head out. He was like, is everything good? I said, no, doc. Nothing's good right now. I can't do this. I went outside. My parents, they were like, you got to do it. We're leaving tomorrow. Like, you got to come back by yourself if you don't do it. I was like, gosh, I can't do it. Got it, got it. Sometime later, I can't do it right now. Wow. And then they came in, they put the IV in. And the, fun, the funniest thing about the whole situation was I had all these little woman lady doctors and the one doctor in there. So I'm laying down. He put the IV in. He's trying to talk to me, calm me down. My dad was in there. And he put it in. I laid down for a second. And that shot up real fast. And everybody froze. They didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> I just didn't realize what I was. I just shot up like this. Nate, dude. And I was like. Yeah. And he was like, just calm down. <laughs> we can do this. I lay back down. They put me in. I passed out. <laughs> Rolled more stuff through that IV. Like. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was freaking out. And then, uh, yeah, and then after that, it was good. I went right to physio. Um, I worked with this girl named Nicole. Shout out to Nicole because she's like, she did everything from Monday to Friday. Um, we was in there. Even on Saturdays, we was in there working. This was over in Germany. You didn't yeah. come back. No, no, no. That's what's over there. Yeah, it was over in Germany. Um, I worked with her, and then I ended up coming back. Nobody knows. I came back in August. I was going to come back and try to play the first week of August after the two bye weeks, and then they had, they brought in another guy who was doing he was doing really well. Willie was doing great. Um, young dude out of Montana, Montana State, was doing good. And then he got all the way to the end championship final um, Tuesday. I got a call from the quarterback. He said, "You better have the best practice of your life." What are you talking about, bro? I like I play football. I know how to, what I'm doing. He's like, no, you better have the best practice for your life. And I came in, I found out Willie had a contusion in his thigh. This is the week of the championship game, or after the semifinal. Tuesday, I practice. I'm back with the ones. On um, in August, I was just, I was in it, but I wasn't in it because I wasn't getting any one reps. And all the scout guys, because we have scout team players, 
they were kind of complaining in the beginning. I understood it. Like you guys are here, you guys are getting, you're not getting all everything that you want, you need. I'm not going to step in. I'm not playing. I'm not going to step in and take over all your scout reps. Like I'd just be kind of messed mm-hmm. up. Not for real. So so I didn't take no scout reps. Um, I let those guys run it. And so basically, Tuesday he came in. I probably practice. I did me. Wednesday, coach said, "Hey, it looks like you're you're possibly going to play." Um, that was the first day I went back to the gym. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> the first day I went back to the, I was just doing physio the whole time, and I was just I, he he Drinking was De Serono's over there. Yeah, that's all I was doing. Like, I, was, I was in the bars. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Damn it! It's like getting a call to fight like three days before. All right, better get better hit the treadmill. <laughs> dude. Seriously, that's like the uh, Justin Pugh with the Giants where he wore, wore the shirt that said "Straight off the couch." Yeah, <laughs> that, because he literally got called. Give me that shirt. He started that week and he fucking tore it up. Yep, give me that shirt. Better get the treadmill. Yep, straight <laughs> off the couch. And then Thursday, um, practice again. Coach called me. Said, "Hey, you're on active roster." Friday just did my bit. Saturday did my bit practice, and then Sunday just did rest, every every game. I was, these guys know two it's, touchdowns. It's, it's, every, everybody yeah. knows it's not it's nothing new. So everybody now that's talking about oh it's just, he can't do this now. His shoulders messed up. He's just, man, watch the film. Watch yeah. the film. Watch me play. That's it. The thing is. It didn't surprise anyone who knows you, though. Nobody. Because it didn't surprise us. No, 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 not at all. When when we heard you were playing and then saw what you did, mm-hmm. it was not surprising. Mm-hmm. You, we actually, you missed the whole season, and we still expected that. Yeah. Like, your boys, all of us who knew yeah, you, everybody that, we everybody expect knew. you to do that. Exactly. Every time over yep. there. Mm-hmm. We expect that, and you did it. So yeah. and That's I mean, what I'm saying. And just, just for the sake of people who are listening or watching, that <clears throat> the European League plays that spring-summer yeah. schedule. Yep. All right. So then, when you're talking about the championship, was end of September. End of September. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's, it is a little bit different. Just so everybody yep. knows that. Um, what's that? Break. Yeah, you want to take a break, break now? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, that was in the good. middle. That's good. Sentence. In the middle no, that's of. Good. Uh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> We did take a quick break, but that was break. kind right. of abrupt. Well, Joe, we're right in the of hungry. Yeah. Joey, Joey, Joey wants to take a break, so we're going to take a break. Yeah. We'll be right back. We'll, we'll be, right we'll be back, back after with, these uh, messages. With yeah. more of Nate Robitaille. If you or someone you know is looking for affordable and professional mold removal or any handyman services, contact Affordable Mold Busters. All right, we're so back, wanna, and that was a. Um, oh yeah, another one. Port. Sponsored by Affordable oh. Mold Busters. Hell yeah. Uh, they are located right here in uh, in North Attleboro. For anything you need, not just mold remediation, but any small jobs, anything. There is no size limit with this kid. I just had Ryan come out. Uh, Ryan Zaborski came out to my house and did so many different odd jobs. Plus, he cleaned all my gutters uh, for an incredible rate. But folks, get a hold of Affordable Mold Busters. We're going to show it on the screen. And uh, his email is affordablemoldbusters at gmail.com. So for all your uh, small jobs, things you need done, get a hold of him. Please reach out. All right. We're back with Nate Robitaille. Jesus. Uh, Where's the Sprite? There's a lot of ice, guys. Where's the Sprite? Nate's okay. sleeping over. And, uh, they're, they're pouring some uh, the sleep Sprite? At Lindsay Street. Uh, yeah. DeSerono and Sprite. Where's it's like when I make a mimosa. <clears throat> Um, Shies. You might as well just, yeah. Feeling dunk. Oh, okay. You sure you want me to make it? Yeah, why not? Dunk a show. Um, but dunk before, a show. We, before we look at this, um, I do a. How is your German, by the way? It's good. I uh, understand pretty much everything. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Uh, yeah, ich verstehe alles. Aber how about money? Do you understand that? Too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and it's, it's crazy. The money is bigger as the bills get bigger. So, like, you a $5, oh, a five wow. euro bill is a little bigger, then 10 is a little bigger, 20 is a little bigger, 50. So, if you don't speak well, you just like hold the thing like this. Yeah, you can get a $500 bill and say, I need this. That's what I need. That's what I need. Do a lot of people over there, they'll speak English. Everybody. Uh, everybody does. Yeah, everybody. Okay. We were actually, we were in the gym one time, and um, <laughs> yeah, we, can't, we can't say those words, but we were making jokes, and the guys, we just got us. Well, we can, but. Yeah, whether we're going to edit, we're not live, yeah. so we can edit. So, yeah, go so ahead. We were making jokes, and the guy was like, uh, "He's like, oh yeah, so where are you guys from?" And I was like, "Oh shit, he understood every word that you said, dumbass." <laughs> 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 uh, talking, about, talking about how you know, sissy and all this, and uh, <laughs> this is your boyfriend and all that. <laughs> you know how Europe is; everyone is just fancy free. They just let it all hang out. Earlier, we talked about your injury. What do you think the medical treatment is like over there? Um. 
the the healthcare system is everyone says it's great and all that, but I mean, if you, it's good that it's free, but it's not really free because you get it taken out of. I say it like this: when you're born in Europe, it's a socialist economy, so everybody gets almost fifty percent of their livelihood taken away. Everybody, the yeah. all that money that they fifty percent of their check is already taken away when they get it because it goes to the healthcare and the insurances and all that stuff. So they take care of you, but. Holy shit! Yeah. Nothing's ever free. Yeah, nothing's free. So they say no. free healthcare. It's not really free. Go back to your the thirty percent that you took out of your paycheck for all that. So, but it's so, good. So it's Joey, good. we got this video up. Um, I used to kick too. You yeah. were you were playing for Attleboro we High starting, School at that time, right? Were you the starting kicker? You're starting um, everything, dude. I <laughs> Play the whole team. Uh, starting. Uh, I, was, I mean, it's, you mean it, it's six that. nothing, and he's kicking the field goal. What do you think? Well, shit, yeah. the funny, the funny thing about hurt. A guy could have got hurt. No, no, maybe. no. I was, I was a field goal kicker. The I didn't fun, kick off by field goal kicker. The funniest thing about this is the scoreboard where Adderborough is actually leading. <laughs> but I told you, I told you, I told you hey, we, back in we, the day. we were eight and three back then. Yeah, yeah I know. But and that was pack, that was packed out. That that I remember that game because at halftime there were still people trying to get into the game. Hey, don't let them go off. You, Fian owes you something. Oh, yeah. Fian, we can talk about that. Mr. Fian does owe me a Super Bowl ring. 2008, when I, my freshman year. Played I was the whole wow. season. Yeah. I played the whole, I played the entire season at Fian. I, I was I was swung JV varsity my freshman year. The only reason I played on the freshman team was because they didn't have a quarterback um, two days before their first game. And they said, Nate, we don't have a quarterback. Would you be willing to do that? And I said, uh, yeah, well, I just didn't know the playbook ASAP. And... Yeah, so I was playing. I was dressing for all three. I don't know if that's legal or not, but I was dressing for freshman, JV, and varsity. Yeah, my probably, year. probably not. But yeah, <laughs> that's probably why they didn't give you well, a ring. The, yeah. When you're you, you <laughs> can do that. Yeah, I did. I, I did that at Finn, and then um, yeah, they got a ring that year with uh, Schwieger and McGowan and all those guys. Yeah, those those were some really good dudes that year, and uh, yeah, I never got one. Well, just so you know, Schwieger's records were broken by who? By um, Nick uh, Nick Yanchuk, who I coached. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, he um, he tore he, it up. he tore it up for a season. And uh, I told you the yardage was was absolutely no. crazy. Touchdown scored also. Wow! So, this kid's nasty. This kid's nasty. and most of the games that Nick played in the first he still first hurt? two games he missed because of injury. Sacred no, he, he's at Sacred Heart. Oh. First two games he missed because of injury, and the next three games that he played, we had to pull him at halftime because he had he was averaging three hundred twenty yards a game, just in a half. Big boy. Imagine if he played so, those two games. He was a beast. Yeah, he's about, what, Dad, what's his size um, now? I guess that's Sacred Heart. After uh, he's probably six heart. one, probably two fifteen right now. Yeah. He's solid. He's fast. Solid shift. dude. He is fast. Yeah. Can't shifty. Take him down, hardest shifty. person to tackle. Hardest person to tackle. Yeah. Well, you didn't know how to. You tackle. didn't play defense, so you <laughs> well, played I offense. Practice. <laughs> Try to tackle. <laughs> well, he blocked. He blocked in front of him, so that was good. Yeah. yeah at least I'm that. on his side. Yeah. For a little guy, he blocked well. Joey was a great fullback blocker. Mm-hmm. We beef. We had exceptional. Was it? I think we beat yeah. Finn every year. Seriously, exceptional. Uh, yeah. Did you beat him in this game? So this game was crazy. Um, this game was Good fourteen play. to zero. This game was fourteen to zero. Bishop Finn. I fumbled on the first drive, um, and it was a scoop and score. Yo, that was a lame duck throw right there. You like if that? They have it. It was no. They don't have it on. Is that there. Obi? Uh, yeah. In the, bat, in the defensive backfield. Yeah. The uh, so what was it? O- O'Brien. He took the kickoff back, 7 nothing, and then the very next drive, I fumbled, scoop and score, down 14 nothing. Everybody's wigging out. Coach DeShane took me to the side. He said, calm your ass down. And then we went on to score 49 straight, I think. You look better than Mac Jones. Yeah, I think I, think I had three, three passing, one kickoff return, and then one, uh, one running. Yeah, I had five touchdowns that game. Just beat the shit out of Fian. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you play in pop one or two? Uh, Atterborough? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, Atterborough uh, Pop Warner. Actually, I we remember were good. You, I game. remember you beat North Atterborough and Pop oh, Warner. Oh, every year, bro. And we, that's before we I knew good. you, and I was like, who the fuck is this kid? <laughs> this kid, I fucking hate this kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, us, us and North had some battles back in Pop Warner. Um, we were always, I think from D team all the way to A team, we went f- five years in a row. We, we went to the Super Bowl, won the Super Bowl, ended up playing Norfolk two years in a row. That was dropped. And we lost. It was, right? it was dropped. You know, <laughs> you cut it. Bro, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Cut that. No, so listen, ready? <laughs> Nobody understands how I had to make this hot take myself <laughs> back then. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, 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 but listen, ready? Everybody now, what are their highlight tapes? The first 30 seconds of the highlight tape right. is, them, is them running around, high fiving people, doing yeah. dances. Yeah. 
Making a uh, practicing thing. Well, huddle makes it very easy for Screw kids that. to do it. Huddle yeah. makes it, yeah. Screw yeah. that. I want to see touchdowns. I want to see plays. I don't want to see you jogging around for 30 yeah. seconds. I want to see you off the clip, go. Okay, touchdowns, you cut it, plays. Cut it before hey, you drop. Let me live, bro. It's 2011. You could tell by the way his arms went out that he didn't catch it. Because they weren't like all the way out. They were like in too tight. <laughs> the ball was money, though. Put it on a dime. Yeah, huh? shit yeah. the field was. Yeah, I had a bro. I never got to play on the, the turf. A track was condemned. Oh, it's nuts. Yeah, Fian. Wow. How far could you throw a football uh, back then? Uh, back then? Probably, I mean, probably that six, was probably 65. That was 50 right yeah. there. I, in, in, Pop one, <laughs> in Pop one, I was throwing almost 50. How long could you kick a field goal? Uh, we never tried that out. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, give me extra points. Yeah, we never tried that out. We just, we, we just added extra points. But yeah, we. Um, it was it was fun, man. Those those years were awesome. Just to th- that's the high school experience. And that's why I wish all these European kids could understand too. Is like because they don't have high school, they have club sports. So they go to school and then they have to go join a club to be able to play something like this. So they don't have youth football. Though. No, they have youth football, but it's in those clubs. Okay. So so they have like a they have like a North Attleboro Pop Warner Attleboro Pop Warner type thing. Yeah. Um, but there's no like high school football or no high school sports. There's no rivalries really. It's more ci- it's more city rivalries. People that sucks. Are, people are more apt to like Dusseldorf where we play is not even in Dusseldorf. It's Duisburg, and people won't come from Dusseldorf twenty minutes to go watch our games just because it's Duisburg. Wow. So they're really proud of their cities, which is I well. Mean, it's not surprising because in Ireland, when we went to Ireland, we noticed that each county mm-hmm. was very yeah. serious about that. Yep. You had you would know when you're in a different county just because the flags on the houses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything like, changed. Every house has like their own a flag. block. Yeah, like you'd go like down a road, and all of a sudden everything was different. And you're like, oh, we changed counties. I love Ireland. Yeah, I'm, like Galway is my favorite. We need Us to go too. together. We've talked about this. Only Galway. I only want to go to Galway though. I love Galway, but those those counties all had their own rich either Dublin, soccer or rugby. Well, Dublin we know soccer. Is like, this is this is yeah, American style cities. football. Yeah, and you would think that they come from everywhere just to go. Well, they well they do now like they do now like so at the championship games and like the bigger games, the German football games, the ELF championship. You go to those games and people are just wearing whatever jersey they want, yeah. whatever their favorite team is. That's who they're going to the game with. They don't understand like. This is my city. This is my team. rivalries. They just, yeah, they just go and have throwing fun. beers at each other. Yeah, in the they just stands. go and have fun. <laughs> they they, they, the they understand that for soccer. Yeah, or football. It's just just having fun. They'll get they'll get to know that soon enough. Soon, yeah. What made you go? Oh, it'll happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what made you go to Stonehill? Um. So I really. So my whole recruiting process oh. back then was kind of it was tough because we didn't really know what we were doing. We had a lot of a lot of interest. But like I said, most of it was to play DB. Um, I wanted to play offense, and just going to all the coaches. Oh, look and stuff. You turn him back. <laughs> <laughs> That's in high school. You turn him back out and <laughs> give him some shit. And you know who gave me shit for that? My mom. Yeah. She said, <laughs> cross you the turn go- him back. Cross I'm the goal line. She didn't wave to him. She said, "Cross the goal line. Don't ever do that." Said, right, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> but Stonehill was just something that uh, uh, I don't know, man. I the recruiting process that we took wasn't really. We didn't know what we were doing back then, mm-hmm. and that's kind of a lot of kids. Um, I think back then, now it's a little different because you have people that help you out. We didn't have anybody help really help us out. It was just my family, and then coach was kind of just giving us feedback on what teams were saying. Um, but I mean, I had coaches come to school and walk me around school and ask me. I'll never forget Harvard. Harvard came to school and they said, "You weren't smart enough." No, nah, yeah. The, the, the first thing <laughs> the guy, the first thing the guy said was, "Why'd you get a C in Spanish?" I said, sorry, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> the guy light, the guy to lighten the mood. But well, I think we're Joey, done here. Joey, yeah. you, know that, you know that feeling. I think oh, we're yeah. done here. Yeah. But yeah, it was, it was just something that, um, I don't know. I, I went there a couple times. I talked to the uh, wide receivers coach a lot, and he and he showed a lot of interest. They actually, the whole entire staff came to my basketball game um, one time. So they just showed a lot of, they just showed a lot of love. Yo, nice catch, dude. Yeah, they, they showed a lot of love. And then, um, obviously, you know, when you're getting recruited, everyone loves you. Then when you go there, you're on the bottom of the totem pole. That's <laughs> what I was. See, this is when you your Stonehill highlights Ooh. is really when you started to, like, really come into yourself. This game was when I started coming to myself. You, Particularly this game. This was on yeah. national TV, CBS Network. Um, New Haven at that point was number two in the country. I had three touchdowns. I just went off as a, as a sophomore. Yeah, I think that's when you found yourself, and it's like this is who you are. You mm-hmm. are a wide receiver, mm-hmm. um, and and I remember like even going back to when you were graduating, Ooh. right? 
and, and you were going through those processes of like the tryouts and stuff like that. Yeah. I remember it was before we took that road trip, right? And we were and and I kept asking myself and all of our other friends, like, why the hell isn't he getting his chance? Mm-hmm. In the NFL, like th- this makes you watch yeah. the NFL weekly, right? Yeah. And you see these guys dropping passes. They're not as fast as you. Mm-hmm. They drop passes that you wouldn't drop. Yeah. Shit like that. You are the same si- si- size as as them. Sometimes bigger so, so, yeah. and bigger. Why aren't you getting your chance? And I and still to this day, I'm biased, mm-hmm. right? And I will admit that I am fully biased. I still don't get why you never got your chance. I still think you should get your chance. That's how biased I am. Yeah. Because I still think you are, you could play in the league, dude. Yeah. And I think you, deep down, think you still could play in that league. Yeah, I, I, Right now, I don't know if I could, um, just because it's such yeah, a Have such you a seen fast. who's on the Patriots yeah, roster as wide receivers? I know, I know. But I know for a fact you are better <laughs> than those wide receivers on that on that roster. For, for me, I never... Um, so I sat, I sat in the office... I, I mean, my senior year, it, it never it never became like a real thing. I just thought college football was cool, playing, doing all this stuff, and you, you're doing good. Like, I get a little bit of recognition. I never thought the NFL was a real possibility mm-hmm. until coaches started showing up um, on the sideline at games, mm-hmm. and you see the, the black jackets with the emblems on it, and you're like, oh, shit. And he's sitting there looking at you. And I'm like, oh, this is actually a real, <laughs> this is a real deal, man. This, these guys are coming to watch me play football. Um, I didn't realize it was a real thing until my senior year. Um, I had a great junior year. I think if I had my junior year, my senior year, mm-hmm. I would have I would have got a shot. My senior year, um, I, I was the only receiver to go for a thousand yards um, I, in ever. My junior year it was the first year somebody did that, and I did it back to back years. But my senior year was I had four quarterbacks. Um, That's rough. Yeah, I had, I had four quarterbacks. We ended up. My last quarterback was a freshman. I ended up with like a thousand yards, four touchdowns, and just so uh, yeah. The touchdowns lacked. Your senior year, but the yards. The production were there. didn't. The, the production, production didn't. The production was and there. And still to this day, uh, first da- every catch I have is almost a first down, right. if not a first down. I know. Um, and so for me not getting the shot, yeah, definitely. I I feel what you're saying wholeheartedly. I I was I was always thinking why I didn't get the opportunity. Why why didn't I really get a real chance at it? Um, and I just think it becomes just one that draft class that year was crazy. All those guys are. Still playing now. Who was in your draft class? Can you? I can't remember, but if you look it up, it's like I think Jameis Winston was in my draft class that year. Did you go to the combine? No, no, no. I went to the. I actually, I did actually the one in Chicago okay. before they took it away. They had the the they had like four uh, yep. NFL. I they went had the one. different satellite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I, had the one, I went to the one in Chicago. Can you talk about the trials you had? Because you did have some. Yeah, yeah. So I had trials with the the Cardinals, and I actually so going through I had the Cardinals. The um, who was it? The Cardinals. And Would they have Kurt Warner? I don't know back then. And then right before I went to Germany, I tried oh. out for the Jets and the Giants. <laughs> I had a try with the Jets and the Giants at Fordham, um, and then I, I went to Germany. But then recently, I had a tryout with the, I mean, in my pro days and all that, but I had a tryout with the Cardinals and the Saints for the quarterback, backup quarterback now for the Texans. I went down and worked out with him, and, and all those guys were there. Um, and the guy from the Cardinals just took my information down again and kind of <coughs> said, hey, we'll, we'll be in touch. But that's really all it is, man. They bring in so many people mm-hmm. every single week to try out and then just send them away. If we if we like you, we'll call you. If we like yeah, you, well, it's, it, it, the Cardinals made a good decision because they're really doing well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most of these clips that we're seeing. Like I said, I'm biased, but. If you look yeah. at a defensive right. coach. Right. You got to be a moron to play like a bump and run man against you tight yeah. because you're burning everybody. <laughs> yeah, you can't. When you when they played cover two and left an extra guy, yeah. at least they had cover. You still made a catch, but at least they had coverage. It was just shitty yeah. defense Joey, against them. Shall we go back to the other one? <clears throat> yeah. Was that you against you the CW I, Post? Yeah, that was uh, actually. Yeah. Brought- yeah, CW Post. Now they're That's where I graduated from. Oh, really? Now they're yeah. now they're Ooh. sharks. Where'd that boy yeah. go? The Long Island Sharks. Where'd that boy yeah. go? Sharks. <laughs> yeah. What are they? The Long, the Long Island, Island Sharks. sharks now. Oh, they yeah. Actually, they actually yeah. lost to Stonehill this what the last game of the season. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I saw the field and Moss. Like, that's it. <laughs> yeah. The um, Stonehill was awesome, man. Just the, just the the my friends and people that I met there, and then the football. I mean, the football could have been better. That that's a five hundred team. Um, Ooh, Moss playing, but yeah, actually this game right here. <laughs> Get off me! This <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> wow. To this day, man, that's how it is to this day. I actually almost got fined for that game because the gloves. <laughs> wow. They told me how to take them off, or I'm getting fined. You can't wear gloves. I couldn't wear those bright green ones. Has to be. <laughs> 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 
But I said, do they have like the uniform? No, that yeah. But I said, you guys, you guys don't outfit us. I said, you guys don't outfit us with any gear. So why? Oh, there we go. (laughs) What's your go to celebration? My go to celebration. Yeah. You just hand the ball to the ref. Honestly. All right. Then that's it. Keep it classy. This is the snapshot I got right there. Yeah, that's there a picture. <laughs> okay, so you were you. Yeah, I was. In, I was. I was in the end zone. I busted your Come on, Dad. Yeah, I was in the end zone. The you picture, yeah. I was in the end zone. Where's that picture? <laughs> this. So this year, actually, the quarterback, my buddy, I love him, Matt. Matt Adam. Uh, played at. Uh, what did he play? That Indiana, was actually fire. In the throwing State. the ball to the ref. Like yeah, that's that. all I do. I, I was saying State. in the photo, I said, "Who taught you how to hold a ball like that?" You know, because he's crossing the goal line. Who's holding the football like that? No, Indiana State, and he, that man, bro, we used to break the huddle, and I'd be like, I look at him when I'm about to just run away, I say, hey, I'm doing it now. And when I said that, I just knew, he said, all right, I'm going, double move every time. I mean, the other thing I'm noticing these, you've got very good crowds at these, different yeah. type of stadiums, great. they're all under. Like this, like this is Frankfurt, this is the first team I played for. Yeah. This, this was a great, they have a great atmosphere, they have a great fan base. This is Barcelona, hot as, hot as ever. But it's fun, man. It's 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 fun to do that and to be um, just to be. Yeah, he just launched that one. For me. So you like it over there? Yeah, I, I do. And all my all my buddies here, they're all in their jobs now. They're all in their lives. They're all grown up. Most of their stuff is here. Yeah. All my stuff is there. He over there Sorry. He over there making noise. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. So so all my stuff is there. Um, that's all my that's all my growing up. At my adult life. Yeah. So it's almost. Do you like see that. yourself living over there? My mother does. She said that to me this year. She really? said, I see you marrying a, a German girl or a European girl and staying over here. And I said, uh, we'll see. Do you ever go to the uh, the beer fest over there? And, yeah. yeah. Every, every every city has their own type of October <laughs> He's fest. like, yeah. Do they serve De Serono and Sprite over there? You, uh, you I got to really? ask for that. That's <laughs> special. I got to ask for that. <laughs> Just gives us an excuse to go to Europe. <laughs> yeah. See, once a year. And yeah. you heard that? You've been I, saying that for 10 thank years. You, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. I've been trying my best. Uh, you know why? You know why? Years, thank you. He, he hasn't reached into my pockets to <laughs> pay for that trip. So I've been trying, yeah. buddy. Timbo <laughs> came. I know Timbo came. Timbo well, came you know twice. We've, I mean, your mother and I, we've never been to Germany. I just so. wait, to, I just wait to see you awesome. when you come back home. Yeah, that's it. That's a good friend, though. Make sure I come home safe. I always see you're home Dude, safe. Of, like these, these highlights, they look like, honestly, it looks like the really high-end college ball. Yeah, Division Two, II, Division One, Double A. Yeah, like it looks and good. So, so, so what he said, what that coach in Stuttgart said before, because I was with him for a long time in Swabish Hall, he said, "You have Europeans on Europeans, but then in spots you have NFL talent, high level talent against each other, and that's usually the Americans. You have a good American on a good American, because um, obviously you can take an American and he get he, he's matched up against a." Uh, guy from switzerland by accident because mm-hmm. somebody fell asleep <laughs> and that shouldn't happen no that's, definitely not happen. that happens <laughs> if that happens it's Touchdown. probably six yeah. yeah you know you messed up there. he doesn't speak english like I'm that guy like that, yeah. like that play right there hit me hit me yeah. that safety was like yeah. that, that's, uh there was this guy running at me he, he's that's mark he's like i played with him he's 30 and it's a small world it's, he's 37 or something like that i love marky mark how long do you see your career going because as as one of your friends i see it going However long you want to take it. So Coach Tom Sewell, he's a he told me that this year. He said, I think that you can um play. I fumbled that one. He said he, he's because he's, you're holding the ball like this. <laughs> 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 he said he said you can play for as long as you want out here. Yeah. Definitely. And I know I could. I could play until I'm thirty whatever out here in Europe. Um just because one, I know I work my ass off in the off season just to keep my body right to play this long. There's a lot of guys that, I mean, even the NFL. You're in a lot guys. better shape than a lot of these guys. Yeah, a lot better shape. You're in a lot better shape than a lot of the, most of the average person anyways. Yeah, you, think I mean, about you it. have to doing a sport like this. Right. But just for, for being in the sport for this long and playing at a high level, that's the difference. Like you can play this game for a long time, mm-hmm. but can you consistently compete at a high level? Right. And I, I just, I've been really good at, at just kind of working at that and keeping up my game. And now it's, it's so slow. The game is not even... There's no nothing in the game that phases me anymore. This game is so slow. Well, I'm going to be honest. Your your highest level of play compared to someone from in this league, like not yeah. someone in not from America, not an American player, but the guys you might be up against. Mm-hmm. 
their highest level of play, you could be 80%, 70%, oh, and still be 10 times better. You saw that in the championship game. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So you might not be 100%, but you're still better than exactly. them. Now, are most of the quarterbacks American players? Yeah, for the most part. They like they'll go out and get. Yeah, they, I yeah. can see that in the like in the film. Yeah, because I'm watching there's the highlights no way, and I'm like, no yeah. I'm like, Americans. there's no way that these aren't because of the way they scramble and, and they, they read the move, end yeah. and they're like everything like that. They're doing all those reads, going that, through like, progressions and yeah, shit. Like, yeah, and like, yeah. like if they don't have like high school sports or anything over there, they're never going to learn those. Like nuances to it. Yeah, there's no for real. Because they're just going to be looking at like, oh, this is the target on this route. I'm going to stare at that guy the whole time and just throw it there. Yeah, if you go to if you go to huddle, the um, their the quarterback I had in Swabish Hall is a German guy, the best German quarterback to ever play this game um, in Europe. Six foot five, probably two twenty five, two thirty. Had a big arm. Nobody thought he was fast, but he could run. He was by far the best German quarterback, I, best European quarterback I've ever seen play, um, and he's just amazing. Like the what he he was he could have been a really good Division two quarterback, and I could see him if he was at a Division one AA school, he would he would have he would have done really well. He would have competed. He would have done really well. <laughs> yeah, Nate. If there's one thing you could say to uh, local Division one schools, not even local, any Division one school, when you were in high school. Uh, and then after high school, after, after college, basically, uh, any NFL team that didn't give you a chance, what's one thing you would say to them right now? Thank you. Yeah? I'll say thank you because I don't know what I would have done. Like, in my mind, I know what I would have done. And like I, I always told my dad, I said, if I went to New England, it's right down the road, I would have stayed home. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I would have stayed home. I mean, I would have liked it. Yeah, I, I, and free tickets, dude. And, <laughs> and, 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 and the Patriots didn't be wrong because the jersey sales would have been up. I would have had the whole area in, in right. movie jerseys. <laughs> the jersey sales would have been up. I said, even if you had me on a practice squad there, and I, I always thought, and I was like, if I was at, if I played for New England, all those stories you hear about guys, I would have been in the facility twenty four seven. You wouldn't have been able to get me out of there. Right. So, I, but I also don't know what I would have did with the money. I, we would have been out in the clubs. And I, we don't. I don't know what I would have did. I mean, I would have just asked you what we do with the money. I mean, you <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but just I would have said thank you, man. Like, I didn't get that opportunity. I was there. I got to see it. I got to compete with guys that are in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just made my drive to be the best that I could be when I went to Europe. And I still have that same. People don't understand. You're a celebrity over there, though. Yeah, I still you have walk, that. You same can't drive. walk in the street without people. No, definitely you. not. But I right. still have that same drive that I had going late, leaving college and going to Europe. I still had that same like tenacity when I play. Is I want to be the best player out there. I and I'm not. I should be in the NFL, and I'm not messing with any of you guys. Mm-hmm. That's oh, not, we that's, all know. That's not why I'm here. I'm not. I'm not here to compete with you guys. <clears throat> I'm here to show you that this is where I should be. Yeah. You guys are just lucky to be on the field with me. Mm-hmm. So that, that's how that's how I approach the game, and that's just how I've. I mean, that's how I've and other players know that that you should be in the NFL. They know that they be they they, they know that, but they'll never tell me. Yeah, <laughs> they know well, they'll never. Tell your me. own teammate <laughs> recognized you as the goat of European yeah, football. He, he did, he did, and he's not wrong. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Let's funny. look at the stats. And look, that's that's look at the purposely. stats. That's you, me. That's me playing defense. Did you try and pick that off, or is it just fall into your arms on Mm-mm. the play? So right here, Look at your hitting. I was gonna say, did you try to hit him or did he hit you? No, and then you just got the ball. I I, I wanted to, I wanted to <laughs> clean him. I wanted to clean his clock yeah. because so and then you, you were like, hit. oh, I got you the ball. Hit. That's what I didn't realize I had the football. It was a snap reaction because I wanted. I saw I had a guy out there. I said he's not gonna throw it out here. He's an American quarterback. I know who he is. I said he's not gonna try me on a fade with a French receiver. He's not doing that. So I kind of baited him. I said, let me just wait a second and see what he's gonna do. And if sure enough, he opened that shoulder up, Play it again, let yeah. it rip. He opened it up, let it rip. And I said, "Yep, I'm not moving an inch." Thank you. I said, I'm not gonna move an inch, and I just waited for him to come out there and then blast him. Dude, the funny part about that whole video is the receiver still paid for it. Yeah, <laughs> you returned that it for a touchdown, but that dude. guy, yeah. that was that guy sick, took dude. it. You had the braids. I remember that. And then I was like two two oh eight. I felt way too heavy. You know what's crazy is before that season started, uh, Timbo came down and was like. Hey, Roby's playing defense this year. I was yeah. like, no fucking way. So you gonna? I was like, he was like, yeah, dude, he's gonna play defense. <laughs> it's a whole, it's a whole mindset. I was like, what? What's he doing? What's he thinking? He's not gonna be able to do it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna doubt him. And then we saw that, and I was like, all right, no, why, yeah. why, why did we doubt him? See, and that's why what, did we doubt and that, him? And that's what, and that's what all the coaches that were recruiting me out of high school, that's what they saw. I didn't see it though. 
So when you Shame when you sign me. your new uh, when you sign your new contract, make sure you send us a jersey. Shoot, we'll man. hang it up right back here. Yeah, we're gonna see, man. I, I gotta I gotta see where where it is. They had a bunch of jerseys last year because just being in Ryan Fire, like the face of the franchise. So every everywhere I went, they were always hanging jerseys up somewhere, and I'm like, man, you guys using my name and like this. Let me get something. Let me get one. Yeah, let me get a jersey <laughs> to give back to my friends and family or something. Like like you said, I mean, they were selling some player tees though. Yeah, definitely. They were selling they, player yeah, tees. They had that little drop. And they made 10k off it. And we didn't see a dime. That's crazy. To be honest, with I, you, I'll man. talk to you guys off air. But I got the perfect logo and T-shirt that would be fire over in rain. I get it, rain. Yeah, yeah. We see what you did there. <laughs> it would work though. Uh, it would work. You just made me lose my question. I had a question. For you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see real highlights, you gotta go find my huddle, and that's the real like. That was when oh, I. I that's when I was in. balling. No, you don't gotta log in. Oh, really? It's open. Yeah, it's open. But yeah, this uh, <clears throat> they um. So, what's up? I know I've asked you this before, but actually, tell other people like is the NFL if an NFL ca- team came to you right now and said, "Hey, just come out here, we'll give you an open tryout." What do you think? They'll be like, "Damn, what have you been doing the last four not, months?" Not not after your injury. I'm <laughs> you mean saying, like when if you're I'm, fully if in I'm shape, fully going when, when when I when I know you as you because so, so like you're the, still in shape. Like the beginning of this that. year, the beginning of this year. Yes, I was rolling. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. You would get in shape for it, but if they called you, because you're still technically in rehab from your injury. Yeah, definitely. So when you're fully in shape, oh. they said, we need you right now. Come try out. We'll give you an open walk on tryout. Like, we got to see I'll what you got. It. Exactly. I'll do it. Hands so, down. And I, so the one that. I the, still think those are options are open for you. So no, the one that happened in 2022, biased, right? The one that happened in 2022, I called my buddy. I called Dante. I called him at uh, like seven in the morning. The workout was at. Can you say like, the team? Uh, yeah, it was the Saints. Saints. And, was, and I was like, man, should so I, was last year. Yeah, I was like, should I go do this? And he was like, bro, nobody else gets opportunities to just to work out in front of NFL teams at thirty years old. Why not? <laughs> he said, you never yeah. know what's gonna happen. Nothing, nothing was probably gonna happen, but why not? Yeah, you eliminate the chance by exactly. not doing it. So what thirty year old gets an opportunity to try out? Go do it. Yeah, exactly. None. So I went out there, I just ran around, caught some passes, and that was it, man. But still. Did they give you a reason why they didn't call you back? Because I've always no, no, wanted no, that. they never do. And they never do? I've always no, asked you that, too, because no, you had all these teams that have no, brought a, you to try out. I've always billion, asked you, what's the reason dog, why? It's a billion dollar corporation, man. And the reason why is because they got a 22-year-old that's coming up next. <laughs> but <laughs> as your friend, I just want to know fucking why my buddy doesn't get a shot. Because they got a 22-year-old that's coming up next. Michael wants to be your agent. I, no, yeah. it's honestly, for as long as I've known you, yeah. I've always seemed more bothered by it than you do. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Have we always talked you, about you, this? You have been bothered. I've always that, been way more right bothered there. by it. <clears throat> now, it bugs I, me. I remember your high school mm-hmm. uh, and the way you played. You've never stopped playing like this. You make it almost impossible for teams to take uh, you down. You don't go down easy. No. Um, at all. And it took like, just count the orange jerseys. And no, and that and that defense right there was look at about, look at about the whole team's coming in, and, and that's all men. That's all men. <laughs> Get and you're, down, you're not down. down. No, Get no, out, man. that's all men. That and that defense was the best defense I ever played in Europe, hands down. They had a bunch of guys in there that could definitely play at. at the whole secondary was all Division One NFL guys. They had they had two guys that were with the Broncos, um, at cor- at corners, and then they had a safety from Arizona State who I think was a, just an absolute stud. And then they had a German German uh German national team guy. But yeah, man, they were absolutely just that And was now you guys game. see why I'm so biased. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't know how many times you've told me that you should be in the NFL. Oh no. Hey, oh, All he, time. Like, like yeah, we go man. back to it so many times. We're watching a receiver drop a pass and we'll be like <clears throat> Nate, Nate would have it. Yeah. <laughs> Nate would have had that. Nate, Nate would Yeah, like Pop, I, Doug, Pop Douglas will drop a pass and he'll be like, Nate would have caught it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it. It's true. I'm more, I'm more bothered by the fact that than you are, are. and it, it's been like that for years. You, you even friend. said it to me. Because like, you're a true Brooks. friend, that's why. You're I would say this though, because seriously. Because I don't give a not, shit it's about not your being age. Biased. It's true. It's a true I fact. I don't give a shit about your age, but if you're still running a four four, but right now I don't know. Right now, probably we, if you got in shape, you would actually. Run a 4-4. So I so I ran. So I had a, the screening on Monday for my training to begin, and I did a short shuttle because we only had like a ten yard, fifteen or twenty yard space. So I can't run a forty. It was indoor, and I ran a four one eight, and I was like, let me just check this out. And I looked at the short shuttle times for the draft this year. I would have been ranked sixth. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why I was getting to is yeah. that As a if you're still running wow. that right now, 
then uh, we got to do a lot better job of getting this film out to, and get all you guys to get wrong with getting you another tryout exactly. because these are ridiculous numbers that you're putting up. It's not so much the number because you look at all these film clips and everybody who's trying to play man against you, it's the dumbest thing. You're beating every oh, one of them. Yeah. And, and and if they're putting their best and that's oh, you're American, burn, you're burning them bad. Cornerback playing against you, you've destroyed mm -hmm. them by five six yards. And a oh. bunch of a bunch of the balls that I'm watching, if they're like in the right place on you on the run, you're gone without a I'm touch. Rolling. And I, a lot of them are like behind you, or you're oh, yeah. stopping in your route to catch it, and then mm -hmm. they catch up. And I, but you're burning everybody. And I'll say I did. Uh, I, I gotta thank I gotta thank the three coaches that I had. One is the offensive coordinator at Fresno State right now. The other one is the quarterbacks coach at Florida State, and then my other guy. He's been bouncing around the NFL, CFL, uh, Division One. I. I had those three guys um, in four years at Stonehill, because Stonehill was like a sort of like a step in school, stepping stone school for coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and those three guys taught me three different ways of playing receiver. One was just. Everything's off a vertical plane. I'm running as fast as I can make everything look the same. If I'm running straight, he doesn't know if I'm going fade or I'm cutting. The second one, he worked off uh, – well, actually, no, the second one with Coach Toke. He's at Florida State now. Love that man. He let me do what I wanted to do within <laughs> within reason of keeping the integrity of the route. Yeah. And then my third one was a stickler. He was like, you got to – he worked off stems. He worked off stemming guys up and getting back online. So I took those three and just combined it into what you see now on the field. So when I, I'm lined up, no matter what coverage is, no matter what guy it is, if he's faster than me, if he's this, that, I have three or four plans already in my head that I'm gonna, I, I can do, will do, depending on what he does. And I had a guy that I, I was training with at Bryant. He, his brother's plays for the, got drafted, plays for the Colts, and he played at New Mexico State. It was a safety, and he said, "Bro, I don't know how to, like, I don't know what to do. Every time you go go to your first move, and I sit." He said, "You go to your second one, and anytime I try to jump the jump the the second move, you stay with the first one." I said, "Man, it's just about being a magician. That's all it is. That's, <laughs> that's the only part about being a receiver is making things that look the same different." Well, you do look at teams like Atlanta, Carolina, mm -hmm. New England right now, and you start going, "Holy shit." Give them a shot because you know what? First of all, you can't suck any worse than what they're seeing on the field right now. So, <laughs> how have they been deal? saying that? Yeah, he's been saying that you know, at that, least that, that, fifteen years. Yeah, since it is about getting the the break at the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how the many people most of it's timing. Yeah, that's I mean, how many people would have seriously given Julian Edelman or Danny Amendola or, or Wes Welker? You know, it's just the timing was right for them. Yeah, that's they the just clicked at it yeah. at the right time. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can get called in to do a tryout. You can torch the whole tryout, and mm -hmm. it's like you still might never get a call yep. because they're just like... Yep. I, I remember... We had, we had 52 people come in this week, yeah. mm -hmm. and like 20 of them torched it. Yeah. Like, what yeah. are we going to do? Yeah, like, we're, we're not going to call everybody. I remember um, it Joey, was before... Joey, Joey, some of those highlights is crazy. If you go to some of the highlight tapes, it's crazy. I remember before it was maybe a year before we went on that road trip, a couple months before you had a tryout right then and there, mm -hmm. and the whole thing was we're gonna go on this on the trip, do the work trip, but it's all depending on Nate's gonna go with us, but it's depending on how this tryout goes. Yeah, and I was sitting there saying I love Nate. But I do not want him to go on this road trip because if he doesn't go on the road trip, that means, that means he's playing good in the NFL, yeah, yeah, I remember that. right? And I was like, I love Nate. I'd love for him to come on this trip with us, but I don't want him coming because I know that my boy's in the NFL. Yeah. And then you came, and I was like, "What, Damn. dude? Damn! What? <laughs> no, we, yeah, what did dude. we? Where did we go? <laughs> Twenty six studies in one season, huh? We went to Hooters. No, was it Hooters outside of Indy, the stadium? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Indy. One yeah. of those places. Yeah. Yeah, it was trash. You had twenty six touchdowns Boy. in one season. Yeah, I led the I led the league that year. <laughs> Ooh, in two thousand seventeen. Yeah, I led the league that year, two thousand seventeen. Um, That's the unicorns. Fifteen hundred yards receiving. Yeah, nutty. And then the guy, <laughs> and then my other boy was. Was that the crocodiles or was that the, the unicorns. unicorns? The unicorns. Yeah, yeah. When I was at the Crocs. I played DB. That was just the COVID year. <laughs> A oh. forgotten year. Yeah, the COVID year of fun. <laughs> I didn't like that year. It wasn't that fun watching you play. I was kind of like was, My dad said it was boring. <laughs> yeah. My dad was like, it's a boring game. We streamed some games. And <laughs> yeah, my dad said it was boring. I'd rather probably, see Nate's It was probably touchdowns. boring watching you on defense. Yeah, he said it was really boring. Nobody nobody really threw anything my way. It was just boring. 
Yeah, they were probably just like, oh, I'm going to throw it at this guy from Finland. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. not going to throw it to the American guy yeah, the whole, that well, we no know, one, no one that really we know can catch because he already plays wide receiver. So the thing was, no one ever threw his way because he was the American yeah. playing D-back. And, and it was, he was on the field. And, but actually, and so this game it was right not here, exciting. This game right here mm-hmm. um, was my first game for the Unicorns. And Frankfurt had not signed me back. And the head coach and the defensive coordinator, who's the head coach now, the Galaxy, were at that game. And I played – the first play of the game was that kickoff right there, return for a touchdown. Huh. I played defense. I was playing I, I was playing safety in some packages. I was doing everything. And then they came after the game like, where was all this last year? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, you guys signed five Americans, so I was getting any play. That guy oh. felt like an asshole. That's I cool. mean <laughs> – yeah. What's the limit? I've never even asked you this, so I don't even know, but what's the limit on, like, how... If you have, five, like, four Americans, right? hmm There's no limit on how many, like, how much one can play, right? You Like, one American could sit, right? The whole time? Even yeah. if he's signed? So, he doesn't have to play. No, yeah, so my... So why wouldn't you just play the whole time, regardless of how many other Americans are signed? Well, because we had a we had an American running back, American quarterback, and me. Okay. So they, it was kind of stupid. Every time position. I came in the okay. game, you knew your pass. It's not the, the same position, right? Yeah, yeah, because you could. You said you could only have two on the field at yeah, once. At right, field. but why? So, would, if you have him, why wouldn't you just sit the American running back and uh, throw the ball to him? I don't know. If if I'm if I'm if I'm, if I'm a, so if coach, it's if my I'm, bias. If I'm, it's if my I'm bias a, coming if, in. If I'm I coaching, a, if I'm a coach in the European League of Football or any European league, I'm never taking a running back because you can find somebody to hand the ball off and have him run. Yeah. I'm always going to get an, a quarterback and some type of, some sort of a pass catching guy. Yeah. yeah, every time. Yeah, I, I feel that's, like running back. Even the that's why I was. Is, that's why I was thinking if you were going to yeah. be returning punts or kickoffs, you could say, okay, we're going to have this one person. It's going to be that American who's going to be the wideout return. That's usually what it is. And that's you know, I mean, because you would think yeah. you can get any Dusseldorf to run yeah, the ball or something football, like that. Yeah. Or well, block. I mean, in the in the NFL. <laughs> Even in the NFL, I, I feel the same <laughs> way. When you, when you think about the NFL, how long does a NFL running back really last? How, how long does an average NFL player last? Three years. That's true, too. Yeah, three not years. for long. It stands for not for long. Yeah. But, but seriously, though. The average NFL career back, is three years. A running back, I would never take a running back in the first round at all. No. You, uh, maybe, it, unless it's Saquon Barkley. That's the only running back I would take ever take in the first round. Other than that, I'm not taking a running back in the first round. Giants fan, it hasn't because even you know out what? that well. Like you said, you can hand the ball off to any, not anyone, but Most you can people. find a guy in the third, fourth, fifth round. But you need a pass catcher, you need a weapon, yeah. and you need a quarterback. Yeah, you think about those teams that don't have a good number one wide receiver. They're always in the bottom third of the league. Yeah, the Patriots. Yeah. Always. Like, always. Nate, just walk in. Just go to the Gillette tomorrow, bro. Bill ain't listening. Sure, <laughs> he's, not, he's, he's dementia not, or something. Did they ever give to the guy that's... Duck out there. That's his the... boy. That's that, that's our boy, Abiola. He's talking about Abiola. <laughs> maybe <laughs> hey, that caused no. our whole fight with me and the guy who fought. Oh, yeah. You did. <laughs> maybe, we'll, maybe we'll sneak a highlight tape to Brewski to put at ESPN. Yeah, why not, man? Remember Actually, Brewski, <laughs> Brewski came to the North Adderall Adderall game one year. He it, sat right man. on that couch. Yeah, he did. Because yeah. uh, somebody remember, was telling me about that. He was asking about me. Remember that fight uh, with uh, me Park? and LeGarrette Blunt? Or the Abiola thing? Yeah. LeGarrette Blunt got I heard some stories about that man in New England. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, well, he told him. He told him. He told Michael me. to show up, up and fight. Try me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fight you, dude. Oh, yeah, <laughs> tough guy, <laughs> loser. I mean, he did we'll sucker. He did we'll sucker punch somebody on the t- in the tunnel at when they played Boise State. A bunch of, after, a bunch of, like two or three times. That was after people. his season that he sucked, and I told him he's probably gonna lose his job, <laughs> and he did. So <laughs> we'll get blunt on the podcast. He did four games later. Hash yeah, there. like four games later, he lost his job. Like hair blunt. That boy's wild. All right, we're coming up on the end of this right now because uh, we are running out of time. With who? With uh, you guys hungry or something? No, <laughs> no. With our, with, with our board here, we, we we will talk. We yeah. can we can continue to go, but the the recording is gonna yeah, end. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, but anything uh, that you want to say to anybody here locally or back home? Because uh, if it does reach them, yeah, just I'd like to say thank you, thank you to you guys for one yeah, for doing this. It's awesome. In. Um, and just thank you to everybody that kind of. That kind of appreciates my game, and I know a lot of people have. I mean, I've been in random cities, and people have come up to me and just said, um, I love the way you play. Uh, and I, My favorite thing of all was when people come to me and they say, and when they leave, they say, you know what? You're a better person than you are a football player. 
And that's my favorite thing that I hear from all these European people and guys that have watched me play and stuff like that. And I bet your parents are proud of that too. Yeah, definitely. That's what they like to yeah, hear. Definitely. They yeah, definitely. Uh, they're excited. They, they want to keep this journey going. Like my dad right now, I told him, I said, this year I want you to help me out with all the recruiting and stuff. I've been doing it my for myself the last eight years. I, I want to help you hear your input and stuff of what should happen, where I should go. And he's now he's starting to... He's taking a little bit of a role. He's calling me all the time, and this guy's doing this, and what what should we do here? And so you're not pretty, represented. You don't have no. I, I I had an agent, two agents. Um, one when I was in college, and then one um, I got rid of him because he had two guys for the Cowboys that got picked up, and he was just rolling with them. Mm-hmm. He was you, you had a good agent in Indy for two for a couple nights. The Texas, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my boy, he, 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 filled, he filled my phone up with phone yeah, numbers I got of you. people that don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I got your I, I got your phone phone number. Yeah, you though. did, you did. But yeah, um, back to that. Just thank you, um, thank you to everybody that kind of supports me and supports this journey that I'm on, and uh, appreciate everybody that uh, has been following me and keeping up. Well, we certainly appreciate you coming in. Um, we need you to sign this for our Wall of Fame. Yeah, for sure. And uh, when do you head back to Germany? Uh, I'm not sure yet. We got to figure out uh, the contract and where I'm going. I'm not even sure if I'm going back to Germany. Okay. So we got to figure it out. But wherever I'm going, I'll definitely let you guys know. And then family trip, we're on. Let's go, <laughs> Mike. Sure, you got man. anything? Uh, nah, I just gotta thank you, bro. We've been do- we've been talking about this for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we have a long time getting you on here. Uh, you're one of my best friends. Thank you, brother. And uh, you know, I-, I am biased as we've all discovered yeah, you, throughout you this know podcast. That. You know that. <laughs> um, I regard you as one of the the greatest wide receivers. Some people might not ever know. You yeah. know what I mean? And um, just keep going. The journey's not over, bro. It's not over. We're not still over. going. We're still going. Appreciate you, buddy. Love you. Mike, anything? Love you too. No, man. Thanks a lot for coming on. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, my man. Joey. Thanks for, thanks for overpouring my drink. Stonehill to Stonehill. You need Stone, yeah. Stone, 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 questions yeah. about Stonehill, man. Played some highlights. Uh, that's good enough. Stone, uh, Stone He's Hill. the silent assassin Joey, over here in the corner. crazy at Stonehill. You don't even understand. <laughs> um, they stopped partying because of us. <laughs> 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 for real. Um, yeah, thanks for coming on. I remember when we started this, we had a list of who we want on the podcast. You were... One of them at the top yeah. who we wanted, so we finally got you on, so that means a lot. Appreciate you, little mm-hmm. bro. Yeah, let's get you healthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get you sir, back definitely. playing somewhere. Definitely. Thanks again, folks. That was Nick NFL. Lovita joining us. Get at this guy. And uh, yeah, don't sleep on this. Don't sleep on this NFL. Get Joey going. will toss some highlights at the end of this video. I'll put <laughs> Peace. Video. Guys, yeah. that's it. In the words of RG, our chow for now. One gummy, one brownie, and 32 minutes of the Punch Drunk podcast. And I can't stop fucking laughing. You're an asshole.